mechanisms do we have for maintaining our pH so tightly? And it turns out we have uh, three really major ways of doing this. One of, this. one of these ways is something that we call a buffer. And buffers are able to take strong acids and turn them into weak acids, or take strong bases and turn them into weak bases. The buffering systems that we have in our blood are the bicarbonate buffering system, a phosphate buffering system, and proteins. We already saw an example how a pro one of the proteins can buffer hydrogen ion when we looked at how hemoglobin can take up hydrogen ion. Right? Uh, so here's an example of how the bicarbonate buffering system works. I'll look at this one just because we've already did, done really kind of carbonic acid and bicarbonate. So if we look at the bicarbonate buffering system, here's a very strong base, sodium hydroxide, lye. It would react with the carbonic acid that's part of our bicarbonate buffering system, and we're going to form water and sodium bicarbonate. Well, sodium bicarbonate is a very weak base. So we've changed a strong base to a weak base. On the other hand, if our blood is exposed to acid, for instance, hydrochloric acid, the bicarbonate buffering system has sodium bicarbonate, and the hydrochloric acid will react with sodium bicarbonate, forming carbonic acid, a very weak acid, and salt. Right? So we've changed a strong acid to a weak acid, or we can change a strong base to a weak base. One of the great things about the buffering systems is that they are instantaneous. As soon as the chemical shows up, the buffering system will neutralize it. Right? So it works immediately. All right, so we have buffers. Respiration, well, we've already been down this route. We know how the respiratory system regulates uh, acid and base. So that if you have increased carbon dioxide, because your respiratory system is not removing enough carbon dioxide, hydrogen ion will increase, right? We looked at that reaction already, we've done this. And so we're going to say that you have acidosis. Well, we learned that as hydrogen ion levels go up, what's going to happen to your respiratory rate? Go up. It'll go up, right, to try to get rid of the CO2, right? So if you hold your breath, you're going to start to get respiratory acidosis. Hydrogen ion levels start to accumulate in the medulla, and it tells your body, breathe faster, get rid of the CO2. On the other hand, if you're breathing out too much carbon dioxide, right, so you're tending to lose the CO2, the hydrogen ion will go down and you'll end up with alkalosis. And of course, if you started to experience alkalosis, the respiratory rate would slow down so that you'll start to accumulate CO2 and drive this back to the right. right? So the respiratory system can use the fact that it's driven really by hydrogen ion to adjust the respiratory rate to control hydrogen ion. Um, you know, we, we talked a lot about respiration and we talked about that it was hydrogen ion, CO2, right, that, that really was regulating it. If you think about that for a few minutes, it might occur to you that the reason that we monitor CO2 and hydrogen ion is one, related to acid-base balance, but is two, where is all of your oxygen when it's in your blood? It's on the hemoglobin, right? You have no way of measuring the oxygen that's on your hemoglobin. The only measurement that we can possibly do is PO2, right? And so our carotid and, and, a, and the aorta have chemoreceptors for O2, but only if they get really low because it's all hidden. But Hydrogen ion CO2 is not hidden, right? We can we can monitor that easily. Yes? Could you take some blood out and put like a pH paper on it, or are there other stuff that'll No, no, you can measure the pH of blood. Yeah, no, it's done. Uh, all right, so the respiratory system uh, does a great job of regulating uh, pH because you can dramatically slow respiratory rate or dramatically increase respiratory rate, right? So blowing off excess CO2 or keeping CO2. 
Yes. Um, talking about regulating pH, there's been a recent nutritional trend of eating and drinking alkaline substances. How would that function in your body? You know, so it doesn't really matter what you, you eat or drink. Your blood pH is going to stay at 7.4. Uh, otherwise, you'll have acidosis or alkalosis. And so people have had fad diets forever where they think you need more of this or that. The reality is the body will adjust uh, using respiration, buffers, and the urinary system mostly for dietary uh, effects. So let's look at the renal regulation. We just kind of went through the renal regulation indirectly uh, when we were talking about diuretics, right? So as hydrogen ion starts to accumulate in the blood, we can excrete hydrogen ion in exchange for sodium, right? So if you start to have too much acid, your body will secrete the hydrogen ion in exchange for sodium, and we'll get rid of the hydrogen ion. We can continue to secrete that hydrogen ion until the pH of the urine gets down to right around four, four and a half, and then we talked about that you can secrete ammonia. Uh, on the other hand, if you need hydrogen ion, you don't have enough hydrogen ion, we can hang on to the hydrogen ion that we have, and you can leave the sodium bicarbonate in the forming urine and have it loss, right? So you can lose the, the base uh, and maintain the, the pH. The kidneys don't react very quickly. The buffers and the respiratory system really, really fast. The kidneys are gonna take 12 to 24 hours to really adjust your pH, but they will adjust it precisely back to what it's supposed to be. So when you go to high altitude and you start breathing more rapidly, right, because of the scarcity of the oxygen molecules and you start losing too much CO2, you're gonna to start to affect your acid-base balance, but the kidneys will over a period of 12 to 24 hours will start to bring the pH back to where it's supposed to be because they're going to monitor the, the blood. Some abnormalities of acid-base balance, things that can go wrong, respiratory